background is is is, on, is, is in economics. So I, I tend to look at these things from from the viewpoint of uh, of an economist. And I think if you look at the salaries of the superstar players, I mean they are sort of astronomical salaries. If you look at the the, the salaries that Messi gets, you look at Ronaldo's salary. I mean it, it's not just it's not just their sort of like basic pay from playing football, but it's all the other money that that, that that's associated with it, the endorsements, the bonuses, um, the sponsorship deals and so on. So the figures are, are quite scary and especially when you compare them, you know, to the average salaries of, of people who are doing what you might consider more useful jobs like nurses, teachers, police officers. Um, and I think from an economic economics point of view, to try and understand why these salaries are so large, you sort of tend to look at it in terms of, well, if a club is willing to pay, say, 50 million pounds or 50 million euros to Messi, then logically, he must be generating revenues for Barcelona of around about 50 million euros. Because if he's not generating that much extra income for the club, then the club is going to be making a big loss on paying him uh, a salary that's so high. So if it's about these players having this uh, incredible uh, ability to generate massive amounts of revenue for their team, then the question you then look at is, well, how do they manage to generate so much um, extra revenue for the team? And, And there's a uh, there's quite a lot of analysis done on on how that might work, and it's along the lines that well, um, you have to look at how much more money is the average spectator willing to pay to see a top player, and how many spectators in total are willing to pay that extra amount to see a top player, and you can sort of show that there's a sort of logical argument as to why it would be that the very, very top players, the number one in their field, can uh, can generate uh, very, very large audiences or very large volumes of, 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 of spectators. And also, they these spectators are willing to pay that extra amount to see the very top performer in that in that field. So I think you you can look at it uh, that way. And the way that technology has changed over the years, it's been much easier for these top players, these star players, to actually um, show their skills on a world stage through the advent of the internet, pay television, and whatever. So you can supply this service uh, to a vast audience at relatively low cost. And that's changed things fundamentally to the days before pay television, before the internet, before there was this easy way of demonstrating, uh, if you like, the superstar talents to a mass audience. So I think I think it's got things to do with that technology. It's got to, it's got to do with people's willingness to pay to see the very best, and large quantities of people being willing to pay to see the very best and these days with free movement of players and competitive markets and people bidding for the player services that revenue that the the player is generating is now going into the player's pocket whereas in days before it used to be going into the pockets of the team owners because the players didn't used to have freedom of movement they didn't used to be what we call free agents Clubs could keep players uh, uh, until they were ready to, le- to to release them. So I think that extra revenue that the players are generating and the ability of the players to keep that revenue for themselves has meant a massive increase in their salaries.